In this video, we're going to discuss entering a bill. Uh, a lot of people ask, why do I want to enter a bill? Why don't I just put in a check? And the idea behind that is that the best thing in business is to get some terms with your vendors. If you're purchasing inventory from them, if you're purchasing services from them, it is great to get terms. A lot of people don't like to have, you know, things that they don't like to have bills. They don't like to um, keep things op open on credit. But in the business world, what you want to do is you want to have that inventory come in. You want to sell it and receive the money for it and then be able to pay off your vendors. Okay, so getting terms, it might not be able to sell all of it by the time you need to pay your vendors, but at least you get a little bit of a head start with your cash flow. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and enter a bill. So here, um, you can click Enter Bill. Notice that I have two choices. I have my bill, and then I have my bill credit, which you can see in another video how that's done. So first thing, I choose my vendor. So you can use this drop down here, or you can go ahead and type in the vendor name and start to pull it up, right? Because you're going to have the, the bill there in front of you, all right? So what is the date on the bill? All right, we're going to go ahead and say 0501. And what is the reference number on the bill? This will print out on your check when you pay them, so it's important to keep that reference number in there. The reference number is 855214. What is the total amount due? I do use tab going through all of these different fields. So once I open the bill, I click on tab, and it takes me through all the different fields. Using this amount due area is great. QuickBooks will calculate for you down here your expenses or your items that you enter in, but if it doesn't add up to that amount due, it gives you a warning. Sometimes, you know, they have on the lower right-hand side of the bill, it has a $5 handling fee. So it's going to show you your total amount due is $5 more than what adds up down here, and QuickBooks will give you a warning to keep you from, you know, miss miss uh, entering your bill. So I'm going to say my total amount due was $14.50. Okay, again I use tab. The bill due here is calculating automatically based off of my terms that I have set up with this vendor. So I have net 30 terms set up, meaning that if they give it, if I get the bill and it's dated 5-1, it defaults that the bill is due 531. That's 30 days later. I can change this manually if I want to. Also, I can change this manually if I want to. All right, so again, tab. Do I have any additional memo, internal memo that I want on here? I don't have anything. It could say first invoice, something like that. So then I come down to the expenses and the items side. So I'm going to treat this as if it's both expenses and items. The expense that they're charging me for, we'll say, is freight and delivery. It was $200 for freight and delivery. Okay, so once I put in the $200 amount, I can put in any memo. Delivered on truck 5-2, 2011. Any memo you want there, that's for internal. If this is for a particular customer that I'm put buying this, then I can put the customer information in here and it'll charge that amount to that customer job. It won't bill the customer for that, but it'll say that this is an expense for that particular customer. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's an expense for Joe Shack, one, two, three, four. Now, if I do want to create an invoice for Joe Shack for this amount, then I leave that checked as billable. So when I go to create an invoice, it will show up there as a billable expense. And you can see that in one of our other videos about billable expenses. So I'm going to uncheck it for now because it's not billable. Notice over here, it does give me a history for that vendor. This is the first invoice, so there really isn't a history. I don't have an open balance, but if it was one there, you could see I, I could click on it and pull up the detail. If I had any POs, any recent transactions, any notes on the vendor would show up down here too. Okay, so I'm going to click on the items and we're going to go ahead and say that they're buying a couple of brass hinges. And I can see here 
uh, or were buying a couple of brass hinges. I could see here how many brass hinges I have on hand. I don't have any on hand right now, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this and say I want to buy 100. Okay. And it calculates again for me the amount. Let's say that actually the amount was $350 each uh, or $350 for this. So I can just click $350 and it'll automatically calculate my cost for me. Okay. Notice how I can also drag and drop these columns so that I can arrange it to, so I can see everything I need to see. So again, if I wanted to, I could put in, you know, I have the quantity. If I want to change the cost, I could put $275. Now this is giving me a warning. Do you want to update this item cost? Um, so what it'll do is it'll update the default cost. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say no for now. All right. Having a default cost is a great thing, which we talk about when we enter a new item. Having a default cost is a great thing because it'll let you know if usually it defaults at $275, then all of a sudden they're charging you $3.50. You can go back to your vendor and say, hey, what's happening? So I'm going to go ahead and put this to the job, but not make it billable. Notice too, so if I right now just went ahead and tried to save this bill, it's going to give me a warning. This transaction is not in balance. Make sure the amounts in the detail area down here equal the amount on the top of the form up here. All right. So that means I need to continue to enter some of the things in here. So we're going to go ahead and, and do some decking okay and we're going to say we bought one and it was for 950 oops it was for 900 <laughs> there we go so now i say it's for joe's shack i put it to the same customer make it billable okay now notice the two hundred dollars plus the 1250 adds up to the 1450 so it'll let me save this calculation okay I'm gonna go ahead and say save and close and now I've created my bill the way to tell that you've created your bill first of all you can look under pay bills here you can see the bill sitting in there under pay bills you can also look to see that it is under your balance sheet I have that $14.50 sitting in accounts payable. And now I up my inventory assets as well for the amount that, that was for inventory. All right. You can also see it on the profit and loss statement. So if I go in here to my profit and loss for the period, you can see I have my job materials that I purchased, the $900, the $200 for freight right there. All right. And then my inventory went up, which was that $350 on the other side. Okay, so that's how you enter a bill.